second birthday. We had another chapter in the story of remembrance and healing. Just as we joined together when I signed the law in his name to make lynching a federal crime, and think how long that took for that to happen. I mean, and we screened the movie Till at the White House. Today, we join together as I sign a proclamation designating Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monument in both Illinois and the Mississippi. as a matter of law, we talked about wanting to do this, but the support from the community has been so overwhelming. I thank the members of Congress for their support, and more than that, their leadership. At a time when there are those who seek to ban books, bury history, we're making it clear, crystal, crystal clear. Darkness and denialism can hide much. They erase nothing. They can hide, but they erase nothing. We can't just choose to learn what we want to know. We have to learn what we should know. We should know about our country. We should know everything, the good, the bad, the truth of who we are as a nation. That's what great nations do, and we are a great nation. That's what they do. For only with truth comes healing, justice, repair, and another step forward toward forming a more perfect union. We've got a hell of a long way to go. That's what's happening. That's what's going to happen with visitors of all backgrounds to learn the history of Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley through our national monument. Look, telling the truth and the full history of our nation is important. It's important to our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren, to our nation as a whole. I've said it before. It was a lesson I learned of coming out of not like real leaders in the Civil Rights Movement, but I came out of the Civil Rights Movement as a kid. I was a public defender, and I used to, uh, you know, I used to say, think that if you pass something that was good, you can make hate go away. Hate never goes away. It just hides. It hides under the rocks. And given a little bit of oxygen by bad people, it comes roaring out again. And it's up to all of us to deal with that. Up to all of us to stop it. Up to all of us. The best way to do it is with the truth. It's used in a different context, but I think it applies here. Silence is complicity. I will not be silent, nor will you be silent about what happened. There's really critical work ahead to continue the fight for racial justice and equality for all Americans. And my administration is committed to leading the path forward. And I know the members of Congress here are even more committed than that. I'm going to close with this. The reason the world saw what Mrs. Till Mobley saw was because another hero in this story, the black press. Yeah. Oh, I'm serious. Jet Magazine, the Chicago Defender, and other newspapers and radio announcers who told the story were unflinching and the bravery with which they told that story, making sure America saw, saw what they saw. Ida B. Wells once said, quote, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. The way to right wrongs is to shine the light of truth on them. Well, that's our charge today. By the way, do you ever think we'd be talking about banning books in America? Banning history? I'm serious. The Till family, to all of you here today, 
I thank you for your courage, for never giving up, never, never giving up. Before I say even what's more is on my mind, I'm not going to leave this podium. <laughs> no, I mean, it's just barbaric. Barbaric what happened. And seriously, all you moms out there, imagine the courage it took to say, let them see. The courage. It's now my honor to sign this proclamation in memory of Emmett Till and Miss Mamie Till Mobley. And uh, I thank you all for being here. And I am, I know I'm considered too much of an optimist, but I believe if we keep pushing, we're going to continue to make progress. We're going to continue to make progress. It's already being made. The idea that when that 14-year-old was buried, that in this Indian treaty room, there were this many people of color holding powerful office, changing the direction of the country, would have been beyond our comprehension. And we're just getting started. Yeah.